Hey guys, it's Alex coming at you from Southern California. Um, I'm recording on a on a laptop today. We'll see how the audio and video turn out, but uh, you know this is going to be close to 20 minute minute video. I'd, uh, and since my I already tried this on my phone, it didn't work, so we're going to try this. Anyway, I hope everyone is well. It's going to be my entry to the Vinyl Tag 2020, so I'm going to get going. Cheers. Vinyl douche if you're interested in the, in the beer. There you go. All right. Number one, best find of 2020. So this is a record I just got last week. Um, I, I there were too many too many great records that I got this year to be honest, and so I, I just picked something that I that I got via trade, which you know for me was pretty much a first. Um, you know I rarely well I, I really never had done any trades, and so. I was really happy to get this in a trade uh, last week. It was on the Brain label, and it's uh, sort of a Kraut Rock super group. It goes by the Lencho to self-titled record, I believe from 1977-ish, I believe. There's the guys in the back. Uh, it features uh, Mobius, it features Osmos Teachings, produced and features uh, Connie Clank. Um, so I, absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoy this. Most instrumental, there are some vocals on the last track, but it's really, really a cool record. One that I actually didn't know about. So really, really happy to, to get that via trade. Number two, favorite record of 2019. Um, I, I know I, I showed this in, the, in my favorites video. I didn't really talk about it. Uh, this is the second. It's not the second, actually, but uh, the second for, for more uh, sort of popular releases here. Um, Muriel Grossman, Reverence, she's the uh, saxophone player from Ibiza, Spain, and uh, yeah, it's an absolutely wonderful modal, modern, uh, spiritual jazz. Definitely check it out. Uh, this is a double LP, beautiful package. Number three, novelty record. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Mort Garson's uh, record, Plantasia. So this was from 1976. This is the, the reissue, I think, from, from uh, 2019. Um, so, yeah, a record inspired by the uh, 70s book, uh, the, uh, the Inner, was it The Secret Life of Plants? I believe, and then uh, Mark Carson, who was uh, an electronic uh, early adopter of the Moog synthesizer, hooked up with an LA guy who was running a nursery, and so this this record was uh, given as a promotional item, and it was meant to be music not for humans but for plants, and so very much a great novelty item from its time from the mid '70s and the whole sort of um, underground culture and you know, naturalist culture of the 70s. Uh, next one, we got an homage cover. Less of an homage than straight satire and maybe mockery. Um, of course, The Residents here as the uh, Aquatic Beatles, we got Paul McCrawfish, John Crawfish, George Crawfish, and of course, Ringo Starfish. Of course, that's the original first pressing cover, which of course was pulled fairly quickly, but they still maintained a little bit of that faux Beatles look. Fantastic record. Love the resonance. Number five, the deep cut. Uh, come up with anything too easily so I went to to this fantastic uh, CD I was issued, released about 10 years ago full of you know rarities from the band the German band can uh, there's a fantastic track on here called uh, the, uh, the dead pigeon I believe something like dead pigeons and it's basically like an early uh, uh, dead pigeon suite um, from 1972, so it's basically like a 12-minute extended 
early version of the song that would become um, vitamin C on Edgar uh, Bamiazzi. Highly, highly recommend that you check that out if you love uh, Can and you don't know that, uh, that record. Something funky. Can't get funkier than uh, ESG. Fantastic, fantastic band from the early 80s from New York. The four sisters there. Just so, so raw, so funky. I love that record. Uh, Shelf Buddies. How about Leonard Cohen and Tony Conrad? Two fantastic artists with very different approaches. Of course, Leonard Cohen, the singer songwriter from Canada, and Tony Conrad, uh, an experimental artist working here with uh, Faust. Uh, I know I've shown this one before. Great records, both. Very different approaches, of course. Uh, number eight, band I've seen live. Kraftwerk. Saw them, I believe it was 2014. They came through Chicago. Original German pressing. Fantastic stuff. Record that I wish I had an original of. Um, this fantastic crowd Prout Rock record from, I think, 1971. There's an 81 reissue on this, uh, it's on the Brain label, but it's on this Rock on Brain reissue series that they did. Kind of an ugly cover. The original is a much cooler cover. Um, this features the uh, the late uh, Wolfgang Downer, who actually died this past week. Um, in fact, all the songs on this record are credited as his compositions, so fantastic record if you like progressive German music, that's a must. Discography, I know I've shown a lot of my Alice Coltrane records. Um, I don't know if, if I had this one at the time. Incredible discography, just one of my favorite artists of all time. Not much to say there. Um, Fantastic label. I love the uh, French egg label. Blue dots and loops has shown some stuff on egg before. Awesome label. Uh, okay, we got an artist who was in a band that later became famous. We got the uh, Holger Suke, the bass player for what we, <coughs> for the band Can, which I showed just a moment ago. So this was a solo effort that came out. It was recorded in 1968, and it's it's almost exactly concurrent with um with the f uh, the f the first recording from the band. So it's maybe not quite. A Preceding the his work with Can, but it's almost concurrent. Uh, fantastic, very experimental record here uh, with uh, a lot of uh, tapes and um, sort of a music concrete thing. Really awesome um, book. So this is a really cool record. It's called the Record Store Book. Um, ironically, I bought this shortly before moving to LA, sort of before I even knew I would be moving to LA. And uh, all of these record stores featured here are in the Southern California region. Uh, so, yeah. Some really, really cool photography in here, interviews with all of the store owners. Uh, thankfully, most of these stores are still in business. I would say about 85 to 90 percent are still in business, which is great. This book came out about uh, in 2015, so about five years ago. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's not, not an expensive book at all. Underrated record, well... I think this became underrated for Miles Davis, Water Babies, because it was released 
1976, but it was recorded in uh, 1967 and 68. You know, it features the classic uh, uh, Herbie Hancock, Tony Williams, Ron Carter, Wayne Shorter, to Korea, Dave Holland. So this predates, you know, his uh, his uh, when he went fully electric. But it's a fantastic record. I think it's fairly underappreciated. I think a lot of people assume that it's uh, more fusiony, but uh, it it predates all that, and it's it is fantastic, uh, fantastic artist with a fantastic batting average, consistency. I love uh, Popol Vu, the uh, German experimental um, uh, sort of spiritual hippie German progressive music. Uh, this is another one I got via trade. Uh, just a few days ago, original German pressing. This one is from, uh, <clears throat> I believe, 1973. All of his 70s records are absolutely essential, in my opinion. Um, same album, different cover. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double up, cheat a little bit here, and pull it again. You know, resonance. This would be a second pressing that was pulled. First pressing with the uh, Beatles-esque cover there. Uh, record I bought cheap. It's worth a lot now. Um, don't remember how much I paid for this, but not a whole lot. So this is the uh, Phil Karen, the uh, fantastic uh, jazz artist from Chicago. Um, played with, started his career with Sun Run and then branched off later. So. This was a recording uh, from 1993 at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. There's the, an actual shot from from the show. Um, I believe they only they probably only uh, 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 pressed about 500 of these, um, so it's pretty collectible nowadays. Um, it's one of my favorite records of all time, full stop. It is uh, just breathtaking, indescribable, and uh, perfection. Favorite drummer? I talked to him, I think, several times. Uh, Rashid Ali, who would be John Coltrane's last drummer, and who uh, replaced uh, the great Elvin Jones in his... Uh, and the uh, the final lineup that uh, John had put together with uh, Alice and Pharaoh Sanders, which you know for me is just arguably an, an even better uh, lineup. And who knows what they could have done if they had uh, played longer. Um, this record is on Survival Records, which uh, I've shown a few of those before. Is a uh, is uh, Rashid Ali's own label, based out of New York. This is called uh, Moonflight. Uh, featuring uh, Charles Eubanks on piano, Benny Wilson on bass, Marvin Blackman on trumpet, uh, or, sorry, on uh, saxophone. All, this, all the records on this label are killer. All right, we're getting towards the end here. Actually, making pretty good time. A uh, record that turned 20 in 2020, or will turn 20 in 2020. Of course, from 2000 is Shellax 1000 Hertz. Uh, it's a single record, but of course, Shellac, uh, Steve Albini's band from the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. I love the. Uh, so, this is House, and you know what it's supposed to be like a tape, like a reel to reel box kind of thing. And uh, of course, Steve Albini, very much known to be one of the great uh, recording engineers of my generation. That's a great record if you like uh, sort of a math punk rock thing. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Oh, no. Sorry, I was going to show this as sort of a 
an alternate to my one of my favorite in the wild finds. I you know, found this at uh, Glasshouse Records in uh, Mountain, California. Uh, fantastic find in the wild. Anyway, that's a the bonus one. Last question was a great trilogy. Um, so an artist I think that is pretty underrated. I don't see a whole lot of his stuff in the VC other than some of his maybe late sixties records, which are more famous. But uh, so Scott Walker, you know, who was kind of a a pop singer, you know, in the sixties, and then uh, sorry for sorry about the glare there. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, by the nineteen nineties, he had he had just gone full avant garde, uh, truly indescribable music. I mean, it's it's. Uh, a lot of this stuff is fairly disturbing. He's got a, he's an amazing, amazing uh, uh, emotive uh, vocalist, um, and then uh, incredible arrangements behind him, and a lot of uh, sort of music concrete and avant garde elements that I mentioned. Um, very, very amazing trilogy. This one being a. Uh, Tilt, which I believe was the first one of that run from the 90s, and then The Drift, which came out in uh, 2006. Don't have a year. Um, yeah, so there's was, there was a little bit of a gap. So this is like 1995, then 11 years later, um, 2006, The Drift, the massive double LP. And then uh, more uh, recently, Bish Bosh. Um, so I, I'd have to check. I, I believe that those are consecutive. I might be misinforming that. But anyway, I don't see these records showing a lot in the VC, and they're all absolutely fantastic. Actually, I believe Derek, I think he showed this one when it came out. So anyway, um, yeah, great. Uh, to be back in 2020 um really enjoying the uh, vinyl tag videos i'll keep it short thanks everyone cheers